In this video, we'll show how the JPL, UCSB, and Caltech team performed task two, as well as a few notes about the other tasks. We considered the mud to be the most difficult terrain. After we were unable to make our ZMP-based walking exceed the performance of the Boston Dynamics controller, we settled on a crab walking approach, which was inspired by Jonathan Spitz's well-timed video on YouTube. Note that the abrupt transition to the crab walking pose never causes a damaging fall. Our forward crab walking gait exploits the boxy collision geometry of the pelvis, which gave us a hinge-like interaction with the ground. This pelvis rotation later proved useful in clearing blocks from underneath the robot. We navigated in the mud pit by looking at compressed camera images from one of Atlas's head-mounted cameras. Gate 2 and the starting pen were used as visual references. This approach was very taxing for the operator, as the robot required careful alignment before crab walking backward up the ramp. Note that this alignment is not shown because I was unable to make it work while recording this demo video. Next, we turn around and forward crab walk through the rolling hills. We preferred to exploit the gutter of low-lying terrain around the circumference since the robot naturally turns to follow the edge. All of our gates and turns are handcrafted open-loop joint motions, and this relatively hands-off gutter ball portion of the run was a welcome relief for the operator. As an aside, the footage shown is sped up by varying amounts. The sim time clock on the bottom of the screen shows the speed up. Our approach was not particularly fast, requiring close to the 30 minute maximum time. More on that later. Our software is easily capable of reliably walking through the bricks using the Boston Dynamics walking controller and our own perception software. We also have a self-writing behavior that allows us to stand up, but we determined that it was not reliable against unfortunately located bricks. Therefore, we chose to crab walk through the bricks as well. While filming, I was not particularly careful about steering the robot. It is generally able to go over bricks, but occasionally gets unlucky and rolls over. This did not happen in the competition. During practice, we were annoyed that the reset script did not work correctly in the hills or bricks. Gazebo taketh away, yet Gazebo provideth a workaround. We did perform corrective steering during VRC trials to keep the robot generally on course. However, interactions with bricks created large, unpredictable yaw disturbances. In practice, we let these cancel out over time and only steered if the robot was wildly off course. We also spent time considering other scoring systems that better suited our approach. So, with these limited tools available to the operator, how did we do on task two in the VRC? Well. We scored all four points on all five runs for a total of 20 points. Two of these finishes were with seconds remaining on the 30 minute timeout clock, and one of these runs was with only a few kilobytes of downlink remaining. We considered other approaches for entering the mud besides the forward crab walk. This diving motion never causes a damaging fall. However, the subsequent rolling over motion always does. In addition to our open-loop crab walking motions, we also developed two other open-loop motions that were useful in competition. The first is self-riding, which is reliable on flat ground, including in the flat bottom section of the mud. During the VRC, we used self-riding to continue attempting to score points after falling during the manipulation and Polaris tasks. The other open-loop motion is a method for entering the Polaris. We had difficulty strongly grasping the roll cage with the hands, so we instead wrapped the arms around it. We began the open loop motion after placing the robot in a specific location relative to the Polaris. This alignment was done using camera images and guidelines such as that the gas cap should be half visible on the bottom of the camera image. Although in the demo we remain in the seat, during the VRC we fell out after scoring the point every time. We then self-righted and continued attempting to enter the Polaris to score the second point but were unsuccessful before running out of damaging falls. These open loop motions have no value now that the VRC is over, and our success was due to operator skill and patience. The manipulation task, which used our most sophisticated software, the only software we used that is applicable to other telerobotics tasks, was also the task where we scored the fewest points. In the end, for us, this competition was won by lots and lots of intense operator training. 